Ladies and gentlemen, NGS continues on with a very hectic week. Today, my friend Fox, Division C West, a couple of veteran teams, Plug Walk and Tickle Me Tassadar. How's it going, my friend? I am doing great. Uh, the sun is out. There is NGS to be had. I am pumped. It's been too long of an off season, and I just can't get enough of uh, Heroes of the Storm right now. It's a good time for it because uh, NGS has turned out a ton of casted games. And let's talk about ours today. So our blue team, Plug Walk, returning to C West, where they called home last season. They finished as the number five seed, bounced out in the first round of the playoffs, but are a veteran team, solid squad. Their opponents, Tickle Me Tassadar, did not play last season. However, season five, they did. And this is the last time we saw them. Just needs to, he needs to worry less about the uh, the rainer here, more about the caddis. Yeah, and, and yeah, it'll be interesting to see how uh, <laughs> well coordinated like, tickle small me. little bits like that. They're gonna go for it. Are they gonna? Are they gonna try and? I mean, can that four man beat that three man? Oh boy, Hyperion. Oh my gosh, base race to end 80. the series. Foul, do your magic. 70. 60, 60, that's it. 60%. ETC goes down. 50. ETC down. Oh 50, my god. 40. 30. Tassadar's got this. Tassadar's got this. They actually finished the sweep. Are you the kidding sweep? me? Oh my god. What is this? Oh my god, the three seed. Oh so, Foxy, that was the clip from the last time we saw Tickle Me Tassadar in NGS coming down from an 0 2 reverse sweeping. Best of five win the division c grand champions not quite the same squad a couple of returning guys this is a little bit of a reincarnation but uh any chance to relive a, a great moment like that what a what a spectacular way to end that series there yeah i couldn't have i couldn't imagine a better way of ending the season all right well with all of that behind us we are here and we are going to give the r and we will get going for game one, which looks like it'll be on Dragonshire. Tickle Me Tassadar uh, has first pick, so that means it was Plug Walk's choice of map. What are we looking for on Dragonshire? Well, I think, uh, you know, the super popular uh, meta heroes are always going to be super uh, contested. Uh, we're talking Ana, Zeratul, Diablo. Um, I, I think... The Zeratul nerfs are not significant enough for him not to be S tier. Um, so I'll be looking out for those picks. Yeah, still a, a little early to know exactly what the uh, balance change did yesterday. Uh, one of the big ones is the speed change, of course, across the board. Everyone's a little 10% faster. Um, so maybe those skill shot heroes a little bit tougher, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, but another hero to watch out for on Dragonshire is a uh, Rexar and Misha. They are able to kind of control that top lane, and as you mentioned, uh, I believe it was on Tuesday, can soak and stand on the point. And most of the time, you're going to need to send a second body up there to deal with that Rexar and Misha. Right? Yeah. It's 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 not only that he can just dominate point, right? It's that. It's the soak, like you mentioned. Um, so that's another pick. So Kalthos first banned by Tikamotasadar. Plug Walk agrees with you. Zeratul still a problem, being taken off the board. Anubarak, despite the nerfs uh, to him, he had his carapace cooldown increased, which will make him a little bit squishier. And, and Anubarak already a little bit vulnerable to auto attackers, so now will be uh, more so. Plug walk responding with the Diablo ban. So who are we looking at first pick? I expect Anna to go in this first round of picks right now. It's going to be Thrall instead. I think Thrall may be one of the most versatile heroes in the game. And even though he's a melee hero, he he can poke out with his, uh, with his Q. He has some hard CC, can be in the four man, can be in the solo. Uh, has a soft CC heroic, has a hard CC heroic, so uh, really doesn't show your hand if you're a TMT. And the flip side, coming up with ETC and Anna, real solid one-two from Plugwalk there. 
Yeah, I think Plugwalk has gotten some pretty good power picks early on. Um, Tickle Me Tassadar choosing to go for some uh, non-meta picks early. Thrall, Stitches, Malfurion. A little bit of an OG combo there, the hook into the uh, into the lawn by Malfurion. That uh, can be pretty deadly. So let's see. I, I imagine they're going to get some kind of blow up. I would highly consider a Jaina ban if you are plug walk here. And, and there you go. It, that's just so easy to follow up all the burst damage to the hook there. It really is. And uh, Mage Choke continues as Gul'dan, Kel'Thas, Jaina all banned. So if you want a Mage, it's going to have to be uh, what either Orphea or Mage Stad right now for either one of these squads. I think Tickle Me Tassadar uh, was kind of banned in fear of a nano-boosted Gul'dan. Um, it's proven to be quite powerful. Um, yeah, that makes so they sense. they just didn't want to deal with that. And right click Jamie coming out, always a solid pick. And uh, depending on who you ask, one of the uh, new kings of the solo lane, Chen, coming out. I really like the Chen pick. We both think he's in a pretty good spot right now. Let's see how TMT rounds it out. Yeah, and uh, Gaius Julius Caesar in chat making a point. Uh, with the uh, speed increase, that hook going to be harder to land. And boy, I would not have picked that out. So they're going for a hook, lawn, blow up, double reset comp. This is going to be, uh, I think, all or nothing, Fox. If they run this well, there's going to be bodies all over the floor. And if they don't, they're really going to struggle with wave clear, map control. They are really dependent on finding somebody, blowing them up, getting those resets and then leveraging kills into map control and objectives. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch at the, the least. Is on. Lunchbox, thanks for the follow, bud. Appreciate it. So that is it for our draft. Lunara coming out. A lot of auto attack damage there for, uh, for Plug Walk, though. Foxy, who you like? Um, Man, it's, it's hard to say. I think you called it. I think if Stitches... If they if they land this combo perfectly on the side of Tickle Me Tassadar, I don't see who can survive on the side. It's pretty much a free kill for anyone except as long as it's not um, one of the tanks. Yeah, and Ana doesn't really have kind of that that OS button to to get somebody out of trouble if that hook hits. But if that hook doesn't hit. Or that lawn is not there, or Ogle the Great is not money with that Leeming combo. And the wave clear is not great for TMT. The map pressure and siege potential is, uh, you know, mediocre at best. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side, Plug Walk, if they get onto a structures with a wave and a DK and a Rainer and a Lunara, those structures are going to go down real quick. Yeah, the sustained damage from uh, Plug Walk is insane. I I really think that as long as they don't die, uh, they win in every in every fight in every situation. So let's introduce our teams. The blue team, Plug Walk, Grumpy on ETC, Two Js on Rainer, Diesel on Lunara, Bloom Mitsuka on Ana, and Betnam on Chen. Ten seconds. And on the side of Tickle Me Tassadar, we have uh, five, four, help me out here. On Genji, we have Siren, Sirenin, Sir, Sirenian. Sirenian, there we go. Um, uh, Stitch is going to be played by Broom Boy, uh, Malfurion by Killua, Ogle the Great on Lee Ming, and uh, Thrall's going to be played by Lunchbox. So point blank hook to start off on the uh, ETC. Nothing really coming of that. Genji is another hero we really haven't seen a whole lot of, kind of falling out of the meta a little bit, relegated to niche. Uh, we're going to check in on the top lane here, but I think Thrall is going to struggle into new Chen. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think Chen's just going to be able to stand on point. Thrall will rarely ever make him step off. Yeah, and, and what's going to be difficult is TMT is going to have to rotate somebody up here to help Thrall out. They're already light in the wave clear department. Hook does land on Ana, though. If the lawn is there, but it wasn't. Good peels by Grumpy. 
Um, and that's something TMT needs to... They have to hit that. If that hook gets on a vulnerable target like Ana, the root has to be there. Like, you... you Basically, Kahlua on mouth should almost never be putting a root down unless it's under a hook target. I agree. As for the relevance of the Genji, I think uh, I think Genji is still very meta, um, but we mostly see him in very top levels of play in Heroic Division or Div S. Uh, I think that's where he's most common. Now, TMT getting aggressive, that is one way to make up for your lack of wave clear and macro control is just take maps from the other team. But Plugwalk here, they do not care that they lost the Jimmy Rayner. They go 4v5 in there and they pick up two kills. Genji goes down, Malfurion goes down as Chen rotated down to help his team on the uh, camp there. So Plugwalk lost the camp, but won the team fight. They're all taking the top point. Plug walk taking the bottom point. That was a pretty aggressive play there by TMT. It looked good until it didn't. Yeah. Ogle the Dra Great trying to work the angles there with Li Ming to maximize her uh, wave clear. Li Ming can do okay in the wave clear department, but she has to hit those uh, waves kind of from the side. She can't hit them head on. Check out Grumpy over here. He's kind of uh, stopping Genji from taking the camp. Interesting. Just kind of sharking around close enough to make him think about his life's choices. Yeah. So Hook doesn't land as there was nobody in the bush there. Now let's go ahead and take a little top lane. So Thrall and Shen, man, they are just obliterating each other. Both uh, heroes forced to tap and then they will re-engage for round two. Thrall's actually doing much better than I thought he would. A uh, fairly high health bar, but forced to go back. Chen jumping on him, drinking, drinking some more, and then re-engaging. But Thrall is very low, and Lunchbox getting the solo kill in the off lane. Well played to you, sir. Yeah, I think if Chen wants to win this matchup, he's going to have to fight uh, out of the wave. Um, when you're fighting Thrall and his W is cleaving all the minions and yourself, he's just getting way too much healing. Nice shot there by Ogle the Great, really chunking out Diesel there. Bonara taking a lot of damage. Ogle the Great, very aggressive in his positioning. And uh, the couple times I've had the opportunity to watch him play, that's something I've kind of noticed from him is he's very aggressive uh, with where he positions his damage dealers. So let's let's keep an eye on that. Watch where Ogle the Great goes. Does he get value? And that they did it backwards that time, Fox. It was actually the uh, the root setting up the hook, pulling ETC under towers. He did power slide away to safety. Uh, but TMT buying enough time for uh, Genji to finally be able to uh, grab the giant camp. Um, but as expected, it is Plugwalk who's able to control the points, hook onto ETC, eating some tower shots. Genji trying to prevent Raider here from getting the channel, and he does. Top lane Thrall is way too low to contest anything here. Back to the bottom. Grumpy on ETC in a lot of trouble. Hook does miss. And uh, let me tell you, as a caster, big three-man power slide. Ogle forced to teleport away. These two sides will not back down. What I was going to say was, as a caster, as an observer, Dragonshire is one of the hardest maps to observe because there is so much going on all over the map, man. Yeah, right, you are. And there's the Ogle the Great's aggressive positioning I mentioned. It very nearly got him into trouble. Kalua able to get uh, enough healing on him to remove the dot. Meanwhile, mid lane, Chen almost had the channel, but Thrall able to take top away, and this very close game continues. Ogle Leaving in huge trouble at bottom, but... But ETC misses a slide on her, and she gets away for free. Well, he hit the slide, but I don't think he had enough mana for the face melt, because the face melt would have done it, but look at ETC's mana bar there. Oh, I think you're right. Let me tell you, as an ETC player, I've been there. Like, I got her, I got her! Oh, no, I, I don't. Well, meanwhile, top lane, Thrall gets Chen again, lunchbox. Flexing a little bit in the offlane, and 
I'm not gonna lie, Fox, I think that's the difference in this game right now. The experience difference is definitely the Thrall getting work done in the top lane against that Chen. Yeah, the Chen's been rotating the mid and stuff. Uh, I think Genji's been catching mid and just the rotation by Chen, he's been missing a bit more soak than uh, Thrall has. Yeah, uh, Mokri in chat making a good point. Plugwalk is kind of playing into uh, TMT here a little bit. I think they have the better wave clear, the better macro, but there's so much perma brawling going down in the bottom, and that's kind of what TMT wants. They want the chance to get these resets. Level 10 coming in for Tickle Me Tassadar. Huge combo by Li Ming, but doesn't secure the kill on Raynor. Uh, Raynor had a fantastic armor um, pop there, so good on him. And that is why you take that level 4 on Raynor. Yeah, Spider it's, it's such a great talent. ETC in a really rough spot. Uh, Raynor four stitches to back off of the body blocks, and now it's ETC turning it on the stitches and actually winning that without level 10s. Speaking of level 10s, for TMT, X-Strike, Putrid File, Twilight Dream, Sundering, and Lee Ming going with the Wave of Force, I assume, in response to the Mosh Pit. Check out top. Check out top. Oh, and it secures that kill for Chen. From downtown, Bloom Misuka taking Eye of Horus and using it as a global support, helping her boy Chen. Great play by both a Chen there and Anna. 2J zoning out Serenian and the first DK of the game going over to Plugwalk. Yeah, I have yet to see Fox that hook lawn combo that, that I think is central to what they're building around. The lawns have been used for zoning and other things, but I don't think I've seen a good hook lawn quite yet. Right. I saw Killua um, throw a lawn in front of Stitches, even though the hook whiffed. Um, I saw him do that one time, but I think that's what he's got to do almost every single time, no matter what. Yeah, I agree. You just have to assume your boy's going to hit that hook. You throw that CC in front of him and make it happen. But uh, this is the siege pressure that we were talking about with Plugwalk with the Rainer. They just get on these structures and they absolutely melt. Let's go ahead and hit those level 10s here from Plugwalk. Hyperion, Mosh Pit, Panda Pals, Thornwood Vine actually for Lunara, not the uh, Leaping Strike, and Eye of Horus as we saw from Ana. Yeah, a lot of people think Eye of Horus isn't that good. Um, when in reality, I think it does the same amount of damage as uh, if all six shots hit. I think it does the same amount of damage as a pyroblast. Just um, over a much longer period of time. <laughs> and, and it's yes, yes, but it's global. It cleaves and it hits all your and it heals your teammates. So I mean, I don't think it's a bad ult well, in any situation I mean, at all. I think it's quite good. Yeah, I mean, nano is I think going to be the more common one. Uh, but if you don't have a spectacular nano target, and frankly, Plugwalk really doesn't, as long as you don't put yourself in a, in a rough spot by anchoring your, yourself down with Eye of Horus, as you saw there, Hook goes down onto ETC, but once again, there's no follow-up there, and ETC, you're not going to bring him down from full health. Uh, but if you, if you don't put yourself in a rough spot with Eye of Horus, you can definitely get some value out of that. And now we see, I think, as this map opens up a little bit, uh, Tickle Me Tassadar are actually fighting a 4v3 in the bottom lane. I do not think Stitches is going to get out of this, or is he? Hyperion goes down, doesn't hit anybody. Meanwhile, in the top lane, they're trying to get on the Chen. Can Serenian get the reset? No. Chen drinking behind the wall. As this map opens up, I think TMT is going to struggle with their lack of wave clear. Yeah, Cernian missing his dive on Genji, and I think that's kind of what cost them the uh, the kill on Chen. And and yeah, you are correct. Plugwalk opening up the map. Genji's in huge trouble up here. Gets picked off. Uh, X Strike not able to save himself with X Strike. But, but Lunchbox picking up another Chen kill in the top lane to help offset five kills to four. About a third of a level lead here for Plugwalk. They do have the structure lead with that fort in the bottom lane now down, but otherwise this is pretty close. I gotta say, I think Lunchbox is the only thing keeping them in the game right now. I mean, that's like almost three or four solo kills in the top lane against a really tough laning opponent in Chen. Right. You know, sometimes after a draft, one of the one of the things you just want to look at is, I mean, 
you look at this composition here for TMT as, as a perfect example of this. You know, what they have is good, but it's difficult to execute. And the harder something is to pull off, the less likely you are to su succeed at it. You know, this this double reset hook thing that they've got going on it is good. It's really good, but it's, it's difficult to do. And, and we just haven't seen them be able to pull it off quite yet. They do have the numbers here in the bottom lane, so I'd like to see them stick it out. Two in the top, showing a big hook onto Lunara. They finally get value. Thrall, 2v1 in the top lane, getting just enough value, staying alive, holding these two guys up here. He is playing so well, they were forced to send Raynor up to reinforce a Hachen lunchbox, showing no fear despite two opponents showing on the map. And I think it's because he knows Genji's on his way. Genji's sharking around. He's kind of hoping that this Rainer steps up. And here he comes. Now it's a 2v2. Lunchbox may have overstayed. Rainer getting on him. I think they're going to trade out when they do. Rainer and Thrall both go down. Panda Pals popped to go on Serenian, who wisely jumps to safety. So not a lot of value there out of the uh, Panda Pals by Chen. Meanwhile, bot lane, two teams continue to skirmish. And this very even game as the hook just misses on to Anna. Continues on. Something's got to give, Fox. Okay, he's going to pick up Top Shrine. Um, I don't think he'll be able to cap it because uh, Chen is still out on the map. But Chen rotating down. If uh, This could be a free pickup for Genji if this fight lasts long enough. It's going to be close. Big Twilight Dream catches too, but not close enough as TMT... Forced to retreat with Chen reinforcing. I think Stitches could have hung in there a little bit longer and would, secured Dragon. He only it, needed to stay in for another two seconds. It would have been close. Chen going really aggro by himself over here. He's going to get hooked under this fort, and there it is. Uh, they're, they're actually running this combo backward, Fox. They're using the, the root from Mouth. Big X-Strike, but right into a... Mosh Pit, great interrupt by Ogle the Great, saving Serenian, and this might be a big moment for a TMT, except for it's actually Genji that goes down to Lunara, and now Ogle's in trouble, so that looks so good, and then quickly went so bad. Meanwhile, top lane, Lunchbox just... I don't know if you see it, Fox, but he's actually written Thrall all over this top lane. It's his lane, he <laughs> owns it, and nobody is going to come here and take it from him. Yes, he does. The structure damage, one more time. Lunara, Rainer, a Siege Camp, a Kata. They just, they just tear through these structures. And uh, that's been the difference, I think, for, for Plugwalk, is their ability to rip through structures. So Thrall finally forced to come out of that top lane. Going to come down to the bottom half of the map, see if he can make this his playground as well. Plugwalk is on the bottom camp, very close to securing it. And there it is. So this is going to be a 5 on 5 but if you're Tickle Me Tassadar, you do not want to fight in the spell armor. ETC in a lot of trouble, and they get him, and the big reset, and a huge hook onto Lunara, and down she goes. Fox, that is how this comp was designed to work. Oh my gosh. Fantastic execution by the, by the side of T uh, Tickle Me Tassadar. That's... Yes. When what it, you can hope that's what you hope to see from this comp when it works boy does it work so let's hope that that's enough to to flip the script on this game they got two two kills in big succession i think thrall being down here with the group really made a difference he gives them extra cc extra damage and a, and a little more front line to make those uh, backliners feel safe look just missing onto the rainer And down goes the bot fort. Members of Plugwalk will be spawning here momentarily, but still a good 45 seconds left on this DK. Uh, I think if you're TMT, you really want to eyeball this keep here because this is going to be the best chance you're going to get it probably for uh, for at least a little while. They don't have the siege on their own to, I don't think, do much without the Dragonite, so you really want to bring it down. Hook into the root. There it is, Foxy. Two J's in a lot of trouble. Can they finish him off? The dot does get him. Thrall actually landing the felling blow. Chen diving all over the back. Forced to pop Panda Pals. Thrall goes down. 
elsewhere, but Chen on the back wreaking so much havoc. Stitches lacking the peel tools to do anything about him. A huge Twilight Dream as Kalua runs for his life. He is not going to get out, though. Eye of Horus securing the kill. Stitches and Genji, the only ones alive. But TMT gets the keep. Was it worth? Yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, as I stated before, Plugwalk is just winning so long as they're not dying. Right? As long as they're not getting comboed and instantly killed, uh, they're just winning the game. I um I don't like this move by Plugwalk. I wanted to see them walk right onto this keep. There's no front wall. I wanted to see them grab the keep. Instead, they're going to try to take control of the map. The Giants on the bottom. Chen clearing out top. But Fox, what do you think? I think they might have been able to get bot keep there. Yeah, I think, I think they definitely could have. I mean, members of TMT just now getting back on the field. Without that counter pressure, that 100% made that keep worth it for TMT. They now have a win condition open. Any team fight, any DK could be the end of the game here in the favor of TMT. Yeah, and as I was stating before, I wasn't saying that uh, Plug Walk was in the lead because I definitely do not think that they are. I think I was just stating that, um, you know, as long as they don't blow up, they can... They're going to win every situation, but they just got to focus on staying alive, I think. So both teams sharking around, staying in a five stack. Plug Walk using this camp to put pressure, which is something their comp does. And I love fighting in the spell armor. That's what you want to do. Force TMT to fight in the spell armor. That will work well for them. Big Sunder hits four people. ETC, though, lands a mosh instantly interrupted. Genji X striking on the back. Everybody pressing their R buttons. And it looks like ETC might be the first to go down, except for a point blank Eye of Horus. Keeps him up. And everybody presses their buttons, and nobody dead except for Chen gets hooked. Forced to pop the panda bows. Fox, what is happening? Nobody is dying. I'm speechless. This is... Nobody died! <laughs> that is going to be the first clip I submit to Nexus Edge where nothing happened. That was absolutely bananas. Rainer yep. capping DK now. Great play by Plugwalk. Good macro manipulation. TMT, though, trying to get something out of this and at least secure a kill, but I don't think they're going to be able to. Here comes the hook. Maybe not. No, he's going to go ahead and back. Now, actually, well, I missed it. Ogle the Great picked up the kill on Lunara, tried to get the reset and secure the Ana. She's still trying, and she does. Ogle the Great popping off on the back. Kalua is actually coming back to keep him up. The rest of the team, though, from TMT... Went to defend the DK. Is Chen going to go down as well? Oh my goodness. Ogle the Great gets the triple. Chen killed Chen. That's really weird. So the DK does pick up mid fort, and that's about all. The pressure with Leeming on the backside. Long fishing hook onto ETC, but Leeming picking up those kills was huge because it basically negated out the DK and now a big flank coming in. Plugwalk is in trouble. Li Ming almost saving Rainer here, but gonna pick it up. I think this is it. I, they could win off this, I think, especially if they get ETC here. Anna's up in 10, Lunara's up in two. So it will be a 3v5, 20 minutes into the game at level 21 gonna be a close thing here thrall needs to make sure he keeps his damage on the cores there's not a lot of other great siege damage here for tmt shields are down core going down fast lunara poking out doing everything she can shield 60 percent tmt forced to back off 50 percent leaving trying to poke etc zoning her out down to 40 percent 30 Lunchbox doing everything he can but thrall goes down core at 10 9 malfurion down four Three, two, one. <laughs> Li Ming on the backside, having just enough left. Wow. Um.
That was a game. Wow. 15 kills to 15 kills. Leeming ending the game with her last cooldowns with basically no health and no mana. That is about as close as close and back and forth of a game as you are going to see. Yeah, I'm I'm speechless. Tickle Me Tasted are uh, showing that they really like the uh, the exciting finishes to games. <laughs> <laughs> Every game they play, apparently, is just a, a close core finish. Yeah, picking up right where they left off, making sure to entertain the masses. Yeah. I mean, how do you follow up on that? Well, I think you die less in the offlane if you want to come back. Yeah, early game. That was lunchbox. definitely lunchbox on the thrall, man, keeping his team in it. Uh, yeah. Early, they were really struggling with the stitches, but to the late in the late game, they started to pick it up. Um, and it seemed like once those hooks started landing a little bit, and I think importantly, when Thrall was in those groups, he gave TMT a lot of, of what they were missing to finish those kills and to get those resets. Because when Thrall was in the groups, it was a noticeable difference. DB Smiley, thank you so much for the raid. Uh, I missed it uh, when it came in, but welcome. You guys turned in for uh, for an entertaining matchup there. So uh, it's probably going to be a minute, I would imagine. These teams going to catch their breath a little bit after that one. So while we're waiting for them, I'm going to uh, play our little patron bumper, and we'll be back in about 30 seconds. All right, so if you're plug walk, what are you saying after that? Or just a Li Ming ban? I mean, did Ogle show you enough on the Li Ming to warrant the ban? So oh, those would be the biggest Box, things I would focus on. I owe you an apology. I left you on mute for the last 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so you're awesome. Just take my word for it, chat. What he said was so inspired and insightful. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> I do not know about that. I was just saying, I think that, um, yeah, you can draft, you can uh, ban the Li Ming, um, or you can, if you spot that stitches Malfurion combo early, um, you just got to draft some protection against it, something. You know, the other consideration is TMT first picked Thrall. And then Lunchbox kind of flexed on it a little bit. If they show that high of a priority on it, and Lunchbox was that effective on it, you think about a Thrall ban, that's something I haven't seen in a hot minute. Mm. I guess you could. Um, but you're leaving open a lot of things. I think in the game one, they banned, uh, Anubarok and Zeratul. Yes. Okay. It's pretty good heroes to be giving up. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of good heroes to give up right now. You got to really pick what you're letting. Yeah. But you always have to evaluate, you know, whether you're going, you're picking first or second and, you know, seeing how many power picks you can pick up early. 
So if you allot someone, so if you leave three open, you know, and you allot the other team one, and you get the other two, um, it's just that's just drafting, though. Um, so I mean, I guess you you don't have to ban those picks, um, but you have to be willing to play them. So game two going to be on Infernal Shrines, and it looks like Plugwalk opt for first pick. So this is Tickle Me Tassadar's map choice. Okay. There you go. Going to be going to Infernal Shrines. Definitely a little bit of a different animal than Dragonshire. And, you know, this could be... Well, no. I was going to say this... If Plugwalk had picked this map in a way, this could be a soft counter to Li Ming, where she's not nearly as effective here, but they opted for first pick, so completely ignore that trend. Yeah, I mean, but I still don't think you ban the Li Ming. No, no, not not on I Shrines. Don't or, not on I don't shrine. think you pick it, I don't think you ban it. No. All right, here we are in draft on Infernal Shrines. So first pick, first ban, or plug walk, on a force of game three. And I expect a Kael'thas ban here. Good ban. Yeah, uh, Kael'thas is is really good on shrines. Uh, Kerrigan, not a hero you see a lot of nowadays, but if you're going to see a pocket pick Kerrigan, it's likely on shrines. That's one of the places where you could see the Kerrigan. Some teams like to kind of whip that out on the backside. Maybe we see that. And they're going to stay with the Zeratul for now. I think that's that's solid. Zeratul, despite the uh, the nerf bat he got whacked with, still still really good. Yeah. So the other side, TMT. Did they see something that they don't want to see again? Game one. Maybe they don't want to see that Anna again, who played a pretty solid game overall. Uh, instead, it's going to be Diablo keeping. Uh, Diablo uh, away from Plugwalk. This is one of Diablo's uh, stronger maps, I think. There's a lot of uh, terrain to slam the people into. Also, it's uh, a little bit easier to collect souls as well um, if you die to reset the soul stacks. So this is one of Dibbles' stronger maps. Gul'dan. Yeah, Gul'dan banned out now for Plugwalk. So uh, maybe setting up for the Anub. Do you ban the Anub? Uh, Plugwalk maybe posturing to get either Anubarak or Ana. I think if Kael'thas doesn't get banned here, I think Plugwalk might actually want to play it. It got banned from them in game one. Um, and he is highly effective on this map. Yeah, definitely. So oh. Phoenix on the uh, on the point is a great zone control tool. Plus, it burns out the little shrine monkeys. And you were Johnny on the spot, my friend. Burns the shrine monkey super quick. Just generally effective. First pick, Kelthos coming out by Plugwalk. I think you got to look to Anna here, if you're Tickle Me Tassadar. Yeah, she's good. Um, also, you deny the pick on the other side. You don't want to. Um, Anno boosted Kael'thas, and there we go, picking up the uh, other main mage in the meta, Jaina, and uh, following that up with the Anna. Yeah, two very solid picks. But let's see, who Plugwalk is going to respond with this rotation? Um, I would think either tank or support at least, so you don't want to leave both of those to the end. It really kills your draft flexibility. And they go with Johanna and Brightwing both, so they're going to get the global. This is um, arguably one of Johanna's more effective maps. She has uh, one of the best, if not the best, uh, shrine clear of any of the main tanks. Really great in rotations. And uh, Brightwing with the global uh, as well. I'm kind of stumped by the Brightwing pick. Um... Yeah, me too. I think that she would have been available on the backside if they wanted her. So maybe could have taken a more... Contested pick here if they wanted and save the Brightwing on the end if they really wanted it. 
Right. I mean, unless you're planning to go double support, maybe, then I guess it would make more sense. But maybe Brightwing, they... Brightwing's really known to shut down the dive, and and Tickle Me Tassadar hasn't really shown anything like that yet. That's actually the train of thought I was going to go with. Maybe they pick the Brightwing to deter a Genji pick, kind of a proactive counter pick. Uh, ETC banned out by Plug Walk. And they, another global offlane to Haka banned out here by TMT. And now they have two picks. I, I, if I'm TMT, I'm picking a tank and solo and letting that last pick flex here. So you can spawn whatever Plug Walk's going to go with. I'd like to see Thrall again. Well, Thrall would satisfy that because he can be four man or solo, right? But instead, going with Murad and Sonya picking up the big front line, letting Ogle the Great flex on that last pick. Uh, Sonya, I... Sonya seems to be coming back a little bit. She is yeah. good on the Shrine Clear. And she did just get a health buff and a speed buff yesterday. I haven't seen her since the patch. I don't know how I feel about it. I would have much rather seen the Thrall. Uh, Sonya is going to be... Uh, her Whirlwind's going to be interrupted by every Condemn. She's going to be polymorphed. And Thrall, the, the ability to Sunder Brightwing is really strong. Uh, so I think Thrall would have been a much better pick. Uh, Leo and Raynor coming out for Plug Walk. Um, okay, I think the Raynor is a good pick. Very solid. Yeah, and it's uh, also, a, also a soft denial from TMT because Raynor and Jaina go so well together as well. They still need the second damage dealer. Very true. With go with the Hanzo. With honor. With honor. Redemption. Well, we were wrong game one, Fox, but who you like game two? <laughs> this is actually really tough. I agree. Um, These are both good drafts in their own right. Both standard. Uh, I think that I think that if Jane or Sonya joins the fight on the shrine, yeah, I think she's going to be shut along. down pretty hard. Um, I think the way you play this, if you are Tickle Me Tassadar, is you have Sonya split and push as hard as she can during the objective, and you just have Hanzo pick up whatever he can. Hanzo really strong on this map for his ability to clear shrine safely. Um, so I think that's the way you play it. Um, but if they don't, if they don't play it that way, I, I got to hand it to plug walk. I think they'll come out ahead. But we'll see both of these uh, comps are very strong, uh, both with good shrine clear, um, plug walk a little bit stronger, I think in wave clear and rotational strength, but beyond that, really not much to set these teams apart. Game number two, Division C West. Blue team, plug walk. Trying to force a game three here. We have two Js back on the Rainer. Diesel on Kael'thas. Bloom Mitsuka on Brightwing. Grumpy on Johanna. And Betnan on the Leor. On the side of Tickle Me Tassadar, we have Jaina played by Serenian. Got the name right that time. Yeah, nailed it. <laughs> Muradin, played by Broomboy. Anna, played by Killua. Hanzo, played by Ogle the Great. And Sonya, played by Lunchbox. And Giggle Schmack, thanks for the sub, brother. Really appreciate it, of course. Leo already in the offlane Fox as the uh, rest of the squads clash for the ceremonial mid lane five on five. And Sonya has already gone up there to meet her foe. Leoric and Sonya brawling in the top lane. Sonya getting the better of it. The lunchbox really making a statement here in the off lane. We picked against him in that first matchup, and then I don't know if I want to do it again, Foxes. He's looking good right now. <laughs> yeah. Now, this four man, though, with the Johanna and the Kael'thas, they're going to rotate much faster. Uh, than the four-man here from TMT. So much, though, that I don't know if they can actually four-man rotate um, TMT. It will be close. You can see they're a full wave of head. This is a full wave of Miss Soak in this mid lane simply because of how much faster Plug Walk is. They only got three of the seven minions in that Soak here. I think, uh, I think TMT is going to have to break up the four-man and just leave somebody mid lane. Yeah, I think they have to identify that they're just not able to do it. 
and just accept it and like you said leave maybe hanzo and that mid. would be my choice too yeah and then i will could... say though once they hit level four i think hanzo has the ability to keep up um in fact the tables might even turn as far as wave clear i mean any johanna just gives that rotational clear that no other main tank can i mean and it really lends that advantage to uh, her team uh, meanwhile, top lane, Leoric really having a rough time of it. Sonya seems to be enjoying a little vacation up here. I think she's having a sandwich while she waits for the waves to catch up. Going right in on that Leoric. No hesitation at all. And really bullying this top lane is Lunchbox. Bottom lane, four mans continue to skirmish. Top lane, Leoric. Sonya, their duel continues. Sonya spinning on, regenerating that life. Leoric forced to play under his own towers. Uh, Lunchbox really having a grand old time. So neither side has jumped on the Bruiser's Fox. Both sides has got the uh, bottom siege camps, and which have already been cleared out. Uh, neither solo laner has rotated away. PMT looking to get aggressive. Stormbolt misses. The four men squads are here for both sides, as is Leoric. Sonia currently in the top lane, so maybe they are going with the Fox plan. But now she goes up, clearing up the last of that minion wave. The red minions in the top lane will crash. More soak advantage uh for tmt here to offset that missed wave mid and there goes sonya really putting a lot of pressure on plug walk here and they bully him right off of the objective but not before they secured nearly 30 shrine monkeys leoric eating the sleep dart trying to queue onto the minions and he does but eating a lot of damage for his troubles lunchbox man he's just right in the thick of this really putting so much pressure on him I think TMT is too little too late, and they are. The objective will be secured by Plugwalk, but at the cost of Johanna and Leoric. Two-man stunned by John Cena. Who actually won the objective? The objective were the kills there, Fox. <laughs> well, Tickle Me Tacit are definitely coming out of ahead. Uh, they're going to clear this objective for free. Um, I'd like to see them split, but the kills got them the XP lead, so... So, like that's like, like I said, definitely coming out ahead. I just saw one of my biggest pet peeves ever in this game is when more than one person eats the uh, John Cena walk. It actually caught three members of TMT. Only one, guys. Only one needs to eat the jump. Yeah. But what I will say, Fox, Sonya was all up in everything. Assuming she goes Wrath of the Berserker, I think an adjustment needs to be made there by Plugwalk. They cannot let Sonya just do whatever she wants. Yeah, like I said, they have the CC to deal with her, right? So she should not be a huge threat. Assuming you're polymorphing her, you're lining it up with Condemn, right? And then as soon as she spins again, you polymorph her. She should never get Whirlwind off on your team. Yep, you just save the polymorph for the Whirlwind. She spins, you polymorph. And when she does it the next time, same old, same old. But really, theoretically, if you polymorph her out of the Whirlwind, that should be enough to kill her if you're doing it right. Yeah. You mentioned your pet peeve as uh, multiple people tanking the uh, Punisher. I gotta mention mine is uh, no one taking these top camps before the objective spawns <laughs> bottom. Yeah, that's a big one. Sonya finally yeah. getting on it. Uh, but maybe not ideal as the next objective is actually top. But uh, Plugwalk really pressuring in. This is something they showed last game with the Rainer too. They really push hard with these camps. I really like seeing that. Yeah. So many teams just kind of grab the camps and let them push in and, and don't do anything with them. But if you have the opportunity to push in with them, especially if you have somebody like a Rainer who just shreds buildings, you really should. Ogle the Great getting bullied down, uh, able to dodge the uh, Living Bomb. I love this play by Plugwalk, taking the numbers advantage, pre-10 and invading the camp. Great play by those guys. Meanwhile, top lane though, Sonya with the Merc camps, she is going to get a lot done with the uh, yeah. Khazar camp here. I think that's a bit of a misplay by Plugwalk. Um, obviously this camp at mid will not get the same amount of value that Sonya is getting top. 
the level 10s are here. We have four question marks and an avatar. There we go. Avatar, Ring of Frost, Nano Boost, actually Leap on the Sonya. Hanzo not showing yet, I would guess. Um, Arrow, and it is. And Kalthos picked up in the mid lane there, and we didn't even notice Fox because we're terrible. But Kalthos not only picked up in the mid lane, but had Convection and lost all of the Convection stacks. Wow. Now they do see if they can catch Hanzo down here. There's the Blessed Shield into the Poly. Nice teleport there by Bloom Mitsuka. Picking up the counter pick onto the Rainer. So it is a four on four. Sonya though already here and waiting. One of the best heroes at clearing out the Shrine Monkeys. And she has already started. So let's talk about ults on the side of Plugwalk real quick. Hyperion for Rainer. Uh, Johanna picked up Blessed Shield, Entomb for Leo, Kael'thas Pyroblast, and Blink Heal for uh, right wing. Yeah, Leo, speaking of Entomb, he's one of those heroes... I mean, Entomb is fine pre-20, but once you get a post-20, as Leoric in a lot of trouble, down he goes. TMT really sticking it to uh, a little bit too aggressive positioning there by the Leoric player, and the leap catches to spinning on the right wing, going down... Plug walk forced to disengage, and this objective uh, most assuredly will go to TMT. Uh, to finish my thought there, uh, post 20, buried alive on Entomb, is super powerful. And uh, Leoric, that level 20 spike, you really gotta watch that. Yeah. So there goes the Punisher. Plug walk did uh, pick up a counter camp in the top lane. The orc is already mid lane soaking. Sonya will go to match. Now no wall here and Brightwing. That's not who you want to bait. That I was kind of waiting for a uh, follow up um, storm bolt there from Muradin, but it was not forthcoming. A blessed shield was forced to use defensively to kind of peel TNT off of uh, the Brightwing there, and this time Johanna eats it, popping the iron skin. John Cena wailing on Plug walk. Uh, members of TMT turning their attention to the fort. It will fall shortly. Meanwhile, from right under Leoric's nose, Lunchbox uh, taking the siege camp and now onto her own. Uh, TMT in a game that was super close early, slow tipping the scales in their favor. I actually have no problem with Brightwing uh, tanking the Punisher, um, but Bloom, Bloom, my man, you gotta blink heal, uh, dodge that. Oh, there you go. Next levels. Much easier to have Johanna do it in press D, though. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> but at least it was only one of them ate it. Yeah, yeah. Skirmish continues mid lane. Leo's top, Sonya's bottom, securing that bottom camp. Plug walk, Sorry? force back. Sonya just putting a huge amount of pressure everywhere on the map. I'm really liking Lunchbox's uh, play in, in both games, really. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. Big flank there. Ring of Frost. Down goes Jaina. Down, or Kael'thas. Down goes Raynor. Big flank. Big play. Serenian with the big Ring of Frost. And uh, TMT is starting to flex a little, Fox. Ogle getting huge scatter shots off the wall and dives over the wall. He wants Brightwing. Uh, maybe a little bit aggressive though. Brightwing <clears throat> DC, but is back. His team burned down the wall to get him out. We mentioned Ogle the Great's aggression. You saw it there. You saw it first game where it paid off uh, with a couple of big kills in that top lane on the Lee Ming. And Sonya uh, taking a nap, watching the camp. Meanwhile. Yeah, well with Ogle's uh, level 13, I think his plan was to dive over, get the kill, and take down that level 13, reset his nin uh, his uh, trait. Interesting. So that's what I think he was really going for, trying to dive over, get the kill, and reset back over. Uh, Sonya now joining the fight, though, waiting on the flank. Look for a big leap here. There it is, right on to Kael'thas. Flesh and shield for the peels. Diesel does get out, but is not able to participate in this fight. 
Uh, red health bar is low, but Rainer actually the first to fall with a Hanzo on the flank. Ring of Frost only catches Johanna, so that's not ideal. Uh, Kael'thas finally going down though, but the red health bars are so low. TMT will take their 2-0 win, limp to safety, and reset for this objective. Actually, 3-0 win. Brightwing went down in there. So yeah. Betting on getting kind of over aggressive with Entomb. I mean, he did catch the Ana in there, but his team's getting zoned hard for him to. Uh, can't solo kill Ana that quickly. Oh, yeah, not as fast as Sonya went onto the back line with the Kael'thas there. I didn't secure the kill, but Kael'thas was totally zoned out of that fight. And if you're not getting Kael'thas following up on the Entomb, you're just not going to get max value out of it. Yeah, I think you just got to be a little more patient with that and, uh, you know, wait for the right opportunity where you know you're going to get uh, value from it. The so TMT controlling the map, prioritizing the Merc camps. They're going to grab both of these mid lane Merc camps. There we go. Capturing the Frozen Punisher, which will march down the bottom lane. Level 16 advantage, 10 kills to 1. TMT looking strong for a 2-0 on their first match and the reincarnation of TMT. Leap and the Dwarf Toss don't catch Leo, but it may not matter. He turns back for the Entomb and gets burned down for his troubles. Bottom Fort is going down. Pyro going on to Ogle, who better run from his teammates. Takes down about two-thirds of his health, and he's going to grab the globe and re-engage. Ring does catch one. It is poor, unfortunate Brightwing who goes down. Arrow catches two. Grumpy, nice job appealing there, but eats the Punisher and gets absolutely annihilated. Fox, this is going from bad to worse here for Plugwalk. Yeah, it certainly is. I think that the, uh, you know, that whole time Plugwalk was fighting down 16, and their uh, their macro decisions early on have kind of cost them this. I mean, and not just the macro, but I guess it's also the team fights. But still, I think that I still think that Tickle Me Tassadar's uh, macro decisions have been on point. Yeah, the Sonya pressure is now this uh, Punisher is died before it gets on core, but TMT trying to end. I think it's going to be close, but with both damage dealers down, it's going to be hard for Plugwalk to defend this. They do get a big Entomb, and Anna's in trouble, but she's not down yet, just standing and firing by Kalua. Nice job. So many players just panic in that Entomb, but he didn't. He just stood his ground, hit his buttons, delayed that death for a long time, Leoric. Brightwing being traded out for Ana. Lunchbox healing on the wave. The so TMT, I think their visions of ending this game are ending, maybe? No? I think TMT's got to pull back. Murodin has no mana. Ogle the Great's very low on health. Serenian low on health and mana. I think you uh, take your win, you take your level lead, you take your 28% experience. Oh, and this is why they overstayed. Poor Ogle is going to eat the pyro black. Yeah, from here on out, Tickle Me Tassadar just has to be patient. Wait for the next objective. They'll be 20 uh, while Plug Walk is not. And just win that way. Yeah, and that was definitely an overstay there uh, by TMT. Plugwalk punishing him for it, picking up the two counter kills on Muradin and Hanzo. And um, Johanna gonna tank this fort? Are they gonna. If they're gonna do it, I'd like to see Leo stay down here too and just burn this thing out. But instead, he's gonna go catch the wave mid. Bottom fort will fall for free. Down it goes. Meanwhile, took me Tassadar, taking me top bruiser, and inching ever so close. Level 20. Nice aggressive invade here by Plugwalk, knowing two members of TMT are still down. So Plugwalk here trying to use those two counter kills to take back control of the map, kind of stabilize the situation here. Uh, but they need to get 20, and they need to get 20 fast. And then we're going to see if that Buried Alive is going to make the difference, because that's really a huge power spike for Leoric. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be huge. 
I mean, you can basically catch anybody in that thing, and as long as your team is there to dump all their buttons into the Buried Alive, that person is probably going to go down. Recognizing this, TMT using their 20 to burn down the mid fort. The Orc in the side lane soaking, doing everything they can to get to level 20. I don't know if they can wait to 20 on this objective, though, Fox. They're a full level away, and this thing's popping in 8 seconds. Well, they can't fight down. Yeah, really, uh, nothing but bad decisions available for Plugwalk. Now, if I'm TMT, I get on this uh, shrine right now. I don't want to give them any extra time to get to 20. And uh, when they didn't come for the bait, which was that camp, nice play bear there by Plugwalk, TMT immediately onto the camp. And now it looks like Plugwalk will go on to the Bruiser camp. They're about two-thirds of the way there. I don't think they can rotate in time to contest this objective, though. Now at 30 monkeys, still not at 20. No. So top lane objective, going to go over to TMT. And they will be laying siege to yet another heap on the side what? of Plugwalk. Plugwalk kind of wasting a lot of time here. Uh, they, you know... They had a lot of time. They could have taken mid fort, I think. Mm -hmm. I think so uh, too. But, but instead, just kind of looked kind of lost. They could have um, also just pushed bottom hard, just shoved that lane out. Yeah. Uh, but they did get 20. And let's see if only Leoric eats the jump as he should. No, it's Brightwing. And leap onto her and down she goes. There is the Buried Alive, though, catches two, but a counter Ring of Frost going to burn Leoric down. That is two for none. Grumpy is in trouble, eats the Storm Bolt. Indomitable does proc. Kalthos does go down, losing convection again. Johanna, probably soon to follow, is that level 20. Can only save her once. And I think Fox, Tickle Me Tassadar, on their way to securing a 2-0 victory over Plugwalk. Game one was quite the barn burner, but game two, they really, uh, really put their foot down. Yeah, they did. You know, they've won Division C once before, and they're coming back, you know, showing that they have uh, what it takes to win it again. I think uh, I think they played well, really well for Division C. Um, I'd be interested to see how far they can take it and see if they can win it, uh, win Div C again. Yeah, and uh, Serenian kind of put the squad together um, literally the day registration was finalized. He, he took a couple of his TMT guys, Grabbed a couple of free agents, and, and what you see here is the result of that. And uh, they don't look like a, a free agent team that was thrown together in like six hours. No, they do not. Ogle the Great, uh, I, I know he was in Div C before. Um, was he, was he on, on... Gin Ginormous Jaegers, I believe. That's it. That's yep. it. And they had a fantastic season last season. They did. They're actually the team that took oh. out Plugwalk uh, last season. So Plugwalk, pretty familiar with him as well. Yeah. All right, well, uh, why don't we see if we can get Serenian in this call here? Okay. All right, let me... Uh... Serenian here. All right. Well, I was going to ask anything I jump out to on the talents, and the first one that jumps out to me is a convection that never unfortunately got finished. And and that hurts to grab that talent and not, not finish the quest. Yeah, I'm glad we uh, moved back to talents because I have a lot to say, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, convection, I think it's, I think it's terrible. Um, not just does it not scale, right? Convection is 100 damage flat. And you don't finish it until like around level 10 uh, if you do not die. Um, I just don't think it gets enough value. I think that... Uh, Mana is good. Everyone agrees that mana is good. But being able to stand in there in damage with a sheet. Oh, sorry, Fox. Say again. I think we lost you. Oh. Sorry, Fox. I lost you there for a minute. 
Yeah, yeah anyways. Uh, you got the gist of it. Fox, turn on your camera one more time so I can get to the... Beautiful, all right. Serenian, welcome, Hello. my friend. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So, How are um, you two doing? doing good, man. That was a uh, that game one was a uh, pretty spectacular. I uh, when you go back and I don't know if you were actually watching before, but I showed your guys's end to the C Grand Finals before we got oh, going. Yeah. And uh, man, you guys picked up right where you left off with a uh, the thrilling core finish to boot. <laughs> well, you know. I said there was going to be a show as soon as this uh, ragtag group formed up again. Well, you guys didn't Glad look like a, a team that formed up like six hours before the registration deadline. How many former TMTers are, are on this, this incarnation? It is me. That, that's you. It. Just you. Yep. Yes. Oh. Yes. I am the lone uh, remaining member. Well, uh, talk about your, your ragtag group of Nexus misfits and how you guys came together and how that's going then. <laughs> uh all right well we formed up in the course of about eight hours um i had just recently come back to the game and decided very quickly that the best way to play here's the storm is in a competitive environment uh naturally that led me back to ngs and so we are a group of free agents that formed up uh under an old name because i we know it we love it and we decided to stick with it uh glad we could do it proud in the first game but we have just been doing our best to get games in before this started because up until that last day, we didn't know each other at all. So uh, fortunately, it's worked out. There's been a lot of synergy, not just in game, but um, the team gets along really well, which is important. Definitely. Um, yeah. Well, talk about uh, Lunchbox because Fox and I were both commenting, but he was he was flexing on that off lane in particular game <laughs> one into a, a to a rough matchup, uh, but. Didn't seem to really care. He was really doing what he wanted up there. Yep. Uh, we even, in our sort of pregame talks, we uh, mentioned that Chen is probably the only one who might be able to cause Thrall problems, and he seemed very confident that, no, nope, no, nope, it's not going to be a problem. Don't worry about it. I got it. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, <laughs> yeah, he does. He uh, seems to have that under uh, wraps pretty good there. Um, but yes, he has been very strong this whole time. Um, he was actually the first player that I got a chance to play with when uh, we were forming up. And right from the get-go, we had pretty good synergy. We were joking around, having fun, and it, I think, has translated very well into games. So, Box, I'll pass it to you. Any questions for the fearless resurrector of TMT? Yeah, I just got to say, I just got to comment again on Lunchbox. Uh, not only was he highly effective in game one, uh, but he was macroing out of his mind in game two. Uh, does he... Does he just kind of go off on his own and do what he wants? Or are you shot calling, telling him where to go? So uh, we operate on uh, multiple shot callers. We don't have one designated. If someone's got a good idea, they can throw it out there. We try to keep comms clear for that reason because it is going to be a little more crowded than someone, uh, a team with a single designated shot caller. Okay. Um, we found that to be our best method so far. And there's, there's always time to adjust if we need to, but it seems to be working very well in scrims, in practices and all of that stuff and in the first game so um he's just a very good player um we are very happy to have him and uh yeah he's he's brought a lot of experience a lot of knowledge to the rest of the team too uh huge help in draft as well kind of similar to the macro stuff he's got a pretty good awareness of where the meta's at yeah you know the uh the solo lane is you, know, you hear a lot of scuttlebutt it's you know it's a little bit dull right now it's kind of not great but you know what we saw in today's games, if you've got a solo laner that you're just confident in bullying the matchup, it, it can do some things um, on the other parts of the battlefield. I mean, I think you guys felt super comfortable in the four man. It was basically forced them to make the adjustments, whereas you guys just kind of did what you feel you needed to do and not had to worry about it. Yep, that stuff I've got to give full credit to him for. I mean, the Chen kills, it's not like we were calling for him how to do that. That was... That was all him, and then we just had to respond to it. So, um, big shout out on that one. But yeah, if <laughs> he keeps playing like that, it's sort of uh, going to be up to the other team to figure out how to deal with it. Let's leave it at that. Box, any more from you? Uh, no, no. I just gotta give it up to him. The Hanzo play was great in game two. Um, yeah, the thrall in game one. I just gotta say, like, I really think that saved the game. Uh, you guys. 
your guys' comp didn't really come on until late, it seemed like. Um, and he kind of helped you guys get there. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, we've identified very quickly where our strengths are, and um, fortunately for us, we reached a point where we could uh, really execute on that. Um, I won't get too into it, given it is the first week of a season with, <laughs> I imagine, people watching and waiting. Uh, but yes, so we know, especially from those games, things that we need to work on. We know things that we're strong with, and we're going to be looking to really capitalize on those uh, in the coming weeks. All right, well, Serenian, congratulations on a spectacular return to NGS, the division that you own. Any uh, shout-outs or uh, well, anything like that on your way out? The floor is yours. Oh, huge shout-out to uh, the casters, first and foremost. Um, it's super cool that we can do this, and it makes the entire scene way more exciting. Uh, shout-out to the team. Thanks for coming together so quickly, and thanks for uh, playing your asses off there. That's uh, pretty sweet, too. Uh, shout-out to Plugwalk. First uh, first opponents in a while. It was really fun uh, playing against them in a, in a real match like this. Um, and also shout-out to the subs that we've started trying out. Didn't get a chance to see them in this game because we were all here, but uh, hopefully they'll get a chance to shine, too, at some point. We're uh, working on fleshing that out, so that'll be fun, too, in the coming weeks. All right, Serenian. Well, congratulations again. We'll uh, we'll see you around the Discord sometime. Fox, any uh, closing words before we uh, we head on out? Hey, congrats, Serenian. Um, I you look like a real threat in Div C. Uh, so uh, yeah, everyone else better pay attention. Thank you, thank you. Hopefully, we can continue showing up. All right, guys. Well, that's gonna do it for us. I was gonna grab a game tomorrow night. But it turns out the NGS casters are so awesome that there are none left. So I will not be casting tomorrow night. We'll be back next week at uh, some point. But for now, um, don't hesitate to hit the follow, hit the sub if you're so inclined. Um, that's always appreciated. And in the meantime, we're going to send you over to Murda for the Thursday night showdown currently in progress. So hope you guys enjoy that. And everybody have a wonderful night.